My, my next guest probably isn't wearing tap shoes, uh, but she's, she's an actress who's, um, somebody said, vulnerable beauty combined with a unique acting talent. Uh, I think first came to the attention of most of us in, in On the Waterfront with Marlon Brando. Um, North by Northwest, the Hitchcock film in which she showed still another side of her personality. Oh, what, Raintree County, Exodus, The Sandpiper, I could go on and on, but it would deprive me of the limited amount of time I have to spend with Eva Marie Saint. Here she is. Well, you do all right. How's it? All right. Be careful, you'll perspire. <gasps> no, all, all actors, and I think this is true, want to sing. Yes. And all singers would like to act. Mm -hmm. And all of us want to dance. And all impressionists want to be known for themselves and not their impressions. Oh. That? The yeah. grass is always greener, I guess. I know. But you enjoy doing what you're doing, except I have a little secret. And now, I know you're to ask me questions. Uh oh. But um, backstage, I happened to go by your dressing room, and the door mm. was ajar, and there you were without your shirt. And you are built like an athlete. I mean, did you ever want to be something like a gymnast or something like that? Who told you to say this? <laughs> That's but, his secret. That's what he wants. Which to athlete do. am I built like? That's what I need to know. <laughs> do you no, want to show us? Do you want to show us? As how a matter of fact, you took your shoes I, off. It's right. I showed my feet earlier. <laughs> no, I was a state champion gymnast, and this is the only thing I wish people <gasps> knew about me. Well, now we do. See, I knew gold. I had gold medals before Scott Johnson, Peter Vidmar, Mary Lee Rett never heard of them. Isn't it interesting how we all want to be other things? Mm -hmm. I mean, happy with what we're doing, but. Yep. There are other things. I, I, I got an honorary degree once from the University of Nebraska, and I said if I hadn't gone wrong somewhere, I could have been Jim Hartung, because, you know, of, among my gymnast heroes. <clears throat> but um, you and I have nothing in common except the fact that that's the name of a film you're doing. And, oh, and that's very I, I thought I'd mention that now, <laughs> so you wouldn't appear to be one of those people who comes on... And say, I'm doing such and such. Because I, I happen to be doing a very exciting thing with some very exciting people, and it was all a very exciting project. Yes. You know, and they end up suing each other two weeks later. But this That's sounds true. good. Well, it's a comedy. It's a comedy with heart, you see. And uh, Tom Hanks, I play his mother, and James Gleason's um, wife. And we all have our stories. Um, but in the film, I leave... Jackie Gleason because he's boring, not because Jackie Gleason is boring, but the character. That's After 36 years of marriage, I just leave him and I start my own life. What sort uh, of woman are you? 1985-ish lady. Ah, well, Tell shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, occasionally a lady has given a gentleman his walking papers in their modern age. Yes, I think, I, and she wants more. She gets a job for the first time yeah. in 36 years, and she joins a yoga class, and, uh, and just begins to look at other men. I mean, she's had a very dull life. And, her, and it's hard for Tom Hanks, who plays our son, because he's going up the corporate ladder, and it's a little inconvenient that his parents are separating. He suggests that I, I go to Florida and stay with Aunt Shirley, and I'll get over it in a few weeks. Uh -huh. And I said, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't move out to think about it, and I didn't move out to, uh, to just be away for a couple of days. So it's, it's funny, but it's, it's, and I'm not gonna tell you what happens at the end. It takes a good actor to play a board, isn't it? Yes, well, you see, it wasn't a good marriage. No. I mean, I mean it, fr from his point of view, Jackie Gleason's character, Max, uh, I wasn't uh, a laugh a minute either. Mm -hmm. And he thought I was frigid, mm -hmm. and, and he played around, and you know, the same old story. We're all familiar with your catastrophic <laughs> list of marriages. You've only been married, what, 34 times or 34 years? I can never remember which. Yeah, I've had my sweetheart for <laughs> 34 years. That's incredible. One, same uh, guy. Same guy. Oh. Gets better Jeff and better. Jeffrey Hayden, is it? Jeffrey Hayden. Same, same guy. Yeah. Uh, somebody said that you have your Oscar in the closet. Is that a comment of any kind, or do you just want to keep the dust off of it? It's a big closet. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's kind of a glamorous closet, but... Um, Jeffrey and I decided when we started having a family that uh, we wanted home to be home mm -hmm. and to have a normal life. And uh, I think we, we have achieved that with our children. We just didn't want a lot of uh, memorabilia of, of, the, of the show business around. But we, we saw eye to eye on that. 
I just remembered <laughs> when, there's a crap game going on outside. What is Don't that going on? Uh, I, I come didn't, on in, um, come on in. Come on in, folks. Some We're surfers. Putting on Some a show surfers. here. <laughs> I, uh, I just remembered when I first laid eyes on you, and there's no way you could know what it was. I took an NBC tour. Did I ever tell you this? <gasps> no. No. And they as led a us kid, up into he said, listen, a, as a kid. Started, you know, like three months old or something. I was a kid, too. And I, uh, I went up into this glass booth that I realized later is the viewing room for Studio 6B, I think, because mm -hmm. later I was a writer there. And the page said, maybe somebody will be rehearsing something down below and you'll get a chance. Oh, Eva Marie's here. I remember that line reading, Eva Marie's here. Oh. Page who adored you and... Was I naked or dressed? Because one time I was changing, it was live television, I was actually changing. <laughs> I've heard of and, this. And, yes, and, and there was a tour above, taking the, uh, the tour at the studio, and there I was, changing, stark naked. So the tour, they got their money's worth. I want my money back. I didn't see this at all. Is there any chance you could recreate this for us? Uh... No. Now I'm modest. No, I was more not modest then, I think. But I was, uh, but I think those were the live days in television. Yeah, and people had to do. Mm -hmm. I think what Ruth Gordon coined the elegant phrase, "bare ass changes." Uh, and fast, and you were yeah. completely. I felt on your own because one time, uh, during the live show, and it was live television then. Once you started, that was it. If anything went wrong, you just went along with it. Uh, but I was supposed to go from the living room to the kitchen, and the commercial was in the middle. Yeah. of that so they, they they cut away but the wardrobe lady put me in another dress and i just i was walking from one room to the next and i was i just couldn't believe that i was in the wrong dress for that scene so from then on i really took care of everything myself it was it was such a a bloodbath of learning to cope and you left one the room in one dress and appeared in another yes, a moment later during the commercial she changed me into <laughs> something she had it wrong and i was too young and inexperienced to, to realize. You figure she must know said, what she's doing. Well, wouldn't you? The biggest mistake in our business. <laughs> yeah. uh, we will be back with Eva Marie Saint, if I have anything to say about it, right after this. <laughs> Someone has kindly lettered for me over there that I'm talking to one of my favorite actresses. Should <laughs> I, I should I forget? What, what if her I name were is one of your favorites? Eva Marie Saint. Okay. That's not so easy. A lot of people call me Eva Saint Marie, Eva Saint John. Yeah, I guess it's not you easy. Eva Saint Marie. Mm -hmm. Oh, Eve Montan always said. I did a film with him. He said Eve Marie Saint. I fell in love with it immediately. Oh, it sounds good there, right? You want to call me that? Marie Saint. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, but that looks like Eve Montan, unfortunately. A little bit. Well, we can't do dance, it? though. Well, we can't dance, can't we? We were talking about your, um, the, the so-called golden age of television, which, by the way, when you look back at some of it, it is wonderful, and some of the golden age had a little bronze and lead in it. Um, I think the memories get fonder and fonder as the time goes on, but, and I don't, really don't like to look back. It's now and tomorrow. I really feel that way. Yeah. But, but those were the days we had some wonderful stories to tell. Yes, I remember the and time it snowed in the submarine. I don't know what, what show it was, but they had a submarine set, and they had a snow set somewhere else, and the snow drifted over into the submarine set. Yeah. And it's hard to ad lib. We're getting a little more snow in the submarine than we usually do, or whatever. But, but I meant stories. I meant, I meant the scripts. That they oh, the scripts. Want about, about people and feelings yeah. and not car right. races. And so once in a while, for those of us who started then, it's a little difficult to read some of the scripts today. Hard to know that years went by without a single car crash on television uh, yeah, back or, then. or murder, yeah. or, or the violence, yeah. uh, but anyway, that's behind us. Speaking of Saint, one, there was a book came out about Hitchcock exposing, among other things, his sadistic sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, there's no use glossing over celebrities' problems, I suppose, but did you ever see any of that when you worked with him in North by Northwest? He was, I read that book, Spot of the Book, and uh, I, I, I had just the best relationship with him. I thought of him as a, a, a teddy bear. He was very protective. You felt on the set that he had such um, respect for his actors, and you had the feeling that if someone else could be doing it better, they would be doing it. You had uh, a great deal of support from him, and he was, he was fun. Everyone on the set, all the crew, they all wore ties and shirts. He was very elegant, classy man, besides being an incredible director. This famous quote, actors are cattle, I confronted him with once on a show. Mm -hmm. And he said, I would never say such an insensitive thing. 
What I said was they should be treated as cattle. Did he say that? <laughs> yes. hmm. So we know he had a sense of humor. Well, didn't yes, he? yes. And uh, you had a kind of saintly, and I'm sick of that pun, image for a time. And do I remember this right? You. You uh, shattered it in, with one word. At one, you know what I'm referring to once you were introduced? You know the incident? I'm making you believe. I, I, no, I'm making believe I don't remember. Or you, or right? you're acting now because you yes, convinced me. Yes, I'm a good actor. You I really are good. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> but that was not on television. No, it was not on television. Event. We're not going to go into that, are we? No, no, we're not going to no. talk about it. No, because now if you said that word, it, it would be nothing. That's right, it wouldn't even... But it was a saint saying... And, and it was it was headlines, wasn't it? And I was mad because I thought that everybody thought I said something else, another four-letter word, which I would never say. Right. Not well, on I, stage. No, no. But this was this was, was not on television. It's and funny it was how not. that was an incident. In, in case we were puzzling anyone, uh, some someone I believe had given you a rather over reverent introduction, and yes, uh, obviously I was, with I was your comic instincts, um, mm -hmm. at the four you. Just said this one word and of course got a huge laugh and was well I was giving an award to a very young filmmaker and, and yeah. they said and now we present Miss Saint who will give the such and such a award and they went on and on about it was a very flowery introduction and do you know someone had seen that introduction and said I wouldn't say that because even he's going to be very embarrassed but they said it anyway so I mean what could you say and I just got up and said oh now I would like to make the presentation and uh, I don't know. I called my mother the next day. She was living in Bryn Mawr, and I said, Mom, I mean, I said something last night, and uh, it's apparently going to hit the papers because the reporters have been calling me and wondering if I'm, if I regret having said it in the light of day. And so I said mm -hmm. the word to my mother, and there was a pause, and my mom said, you and your sister just never talk that way until you went to college. <laughs> you had a lot of funny ideas at college. But imagine, oh. and it was, this was not in 1750, right? No. I mean, imagine if you... I think you could print the word now. You couldn't print it Today then. Today you can't turn on TV without hearing. I know. Of, but it was the saint saying that was... Yes, the saint Good heavens, saying. newsworthy. Okay. Oh, come on. Why did you bring that up? I, I don't know. No. I don't I, know. Because I want you to like me. <laughs> <laughs> they say you don't always know that a movie's any good when you're making it. And the legend is when... Casablanca, everybody agrees, you know, one of the great films of all time. They all wanted out of it. They knew it was a turkey. Bogart said, this will end my career. And Ingrid Bergman told on a show about how they didn't know how it was going to end. And the director said, I don't even know which man you're going to get at the end. Just play to both of them. Had everything going against it. Uh, when you made certainly one of the handful of great films of our time on the waterfront, did you know it was good at the time? Can you, could you tell? No, I was just worrying about if I were good, because it was my first film. And I was... I, I'd never, I had never, uh, I didn't try out for it because I was in the theater and doing live television and I'd made the rounds once for films and they asked me my bust measurement and my height and I'm weight and all of that and I thought I didn't study or go to the actor's studio to be asked those questions and I never went back and made rounds and no desire to, to make films. So when I, when I got that part, I was, I just didn't really know the, the, the story and I remember leaving the apartment on 26 West 9th Street and crying when I left for the first day shooting and my my husband had said uh, don't don't worry honey I mean, you're in good hands Elia Kazan is directing it Carl mm -hmm. Malden your friend he's in it Rod Stagger all your friends from the actor's studio don't worry so I stopped crying and <laughs> got in the car but I was first few days I was very nervous and you never even had a bit part where you could see what you looked like on the screen before anything no 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 I just I've been doing television I yeah. could see that but it was just it was one of those things where I'm sure every blonde actress in, in New York had been had been reading for that role yeah. and we hear about actresses who've worked with Brando who said it was thrilling and sometimes scary Scary. What does That's, that mean? Uh, you know what I think it means? To work with him was wonderful. He was a prince. Thank goodness I was happily married because I had the biggest crush on that. I mean, I've worked with some terrific leading men, but yeah. he was so attentive and so dear and so talented. Scary, I think, in the area that he's so super sensitive that off camera I felt a little self-conscious. I was wondering mm -hmm. what he was thinking of me as Eva Marie, not, not as the actress, because once you start working and you are the character and he's the character then you're you're playing those two people but when we'd have lunch and he was Marlon and I was Eva Marie I was self-conscious uh, but you'd been in class with him hadn't you at the studio well I had not no I'd never worked with him I'd seen him in class but I'd never yeah. actually um, 
I worked with them. See, that can happen. I felt the same way about Monty Cliff in uh, Raintree County. Mm -hmm. When you're working, the catalyst is the material, the scene, what, what you're creating. Then that, that stops. And, and I remember one day he asked me to have lunch with him. And I'm shy. Maybe you wouldn't know that. But I used to be much more shy. I still am shy with a lot of people. Not, not here, but like in a, in a party or something like that. And so Monty Cliff asked me to have lunch with him. And he was more shy than I was. And we said nothing to one another. It was the most painful really hit hour. It off. I, I, I'll, never, I'll never forget it. And I just made a mental note. I'll never have lunch with him again because it was so painful. But then after lunch, we're called on the set and we play Nell and Johnny Appleseed, whatever, and, and we're supposed to be in love and all of this. And he gave so much, but as two people. You mean you sat there and just nothing. silence? I looked you could hear clocks my, ticking? There was and... nothing. What can I tell you? I mean, I, I, my soup, I looked at my soup. I looked at my sandwich. <laughs> I was concentrating on my milkshake, and he was doing the same thing. Not even the weather? You couldn't talk about the just, weather? I don't or... know why we ever had lunch together, but we never did again. He was a tortured man, was he? Uh, yes, but yeah. again, so terribly sensitive. I think that made me... Um, it is the, scary is a very, very good word. When I, my husband and I do plays quite often, and we'll have a little seminar following the play and questions and answers, and the first question always is, what is Marlon Brando really like? Sure. So I've reached the point where I say, I'll answer everything and everything except what is Marlon Brando really like? And then I say, but by the way, he was terrific. Now, people don't go around asking, people have never asked you what I'm really like, have they? They, they ask me now on my earphone. <laughs> right. But see, he's, no. he's mysterious. I mean, I'd like to be a little more mysterious. Mm -hmm. You're kind of mysterious, a little bit. Am I a bit of an enigma? A little, a little bit. What's mysterious about me? <laughs> well, nothing. Now that I've seen you without your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> It's not fair. I haven't seen you without yours, so you're still mysterious. Oh, but you see me tap dance. That's, that's I have seen you tap good. dance. I was quite impressed with it. There's nothing you can't do. We'll be right back. We're just talking about one of the mystiques of movie acting. Um, once an actress I had on was horribly uncomfortable. And afterwards they said, you know why? You made her sit on her bad side and she didn't realize till she came out. Has everyone, everyone ever know. told you which I is your Hitchcock good side? I think did. And I just wanted to forget it as soon as possible. Better I mean, I'm sure we have, we all do. I mean, our faces are not symmetrical, apparently. Yeah. Um, but there's one, so, now as a matter of fact, I'm working with Tom Hanks and we were talking about it on the airplane. That's what actors talk about on the airplane, which is your good side and bad side, no, no. <laughs> but I was sitting next to him and I said, am I on your good side or your bad side? But he showed me how he knows. Someone told him one, one side is a little stronger than the other, his, his, his jawbone and his nose looks a little different from one side. I, I just would rather know because especially in television where you don't have that much time, Mm -hmm. You know, it takes a lot of time to light from just one side, but in, in those days in movie making when they would light those leading ladies to die, yes. right? Those wonderful lights. And those ladies knew how, how to be lit. Like, There's one actress I, was, I saw on the stage and uh, never saw the right side of her face for the entire evening. Someone pointed out that they were right. I realized someone had been in movies, I'm mm -hmm. sure. And someone they staged everything so that she mm -hmm. entered this way, she left this way. and. Well, lighting is everything. Isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a lot, has a lot to do with how, how you look. Not just the cinematographer, but the lighting man. I had a terrific desire to get on this side or and yell, Miss, mm -hmm, and see if she'd go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever acted anybody you couldn't stand? I really haven't. Yeah. I just, I have, I find that I, I look for something that I could love about them, because it's usually, or it has been, a love situation, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I just find that as a person, even before I start the character, that I find something that I really like about them. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have great eyes. Do I? <laughs> what, both of them? Yeah, both yeah. of them, <laughs> left and right. But, and your personality. I mean, you'll always be youthful, for instance. I think that's very... Uh, becoming and and um, and you're humorous and that's so I could find a lot of things but that's what I do 
But if you reckon with a guy who was a known worst, sadistic, horrible wife beating Nazi, you mean, swine, in, you mean in, in life? In, in life? In real life, yeah. In, are you talking about uh, yourself? In, 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 no, in, no, 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 no. But somebody we all know. Oh. Um, no. You'd have to find things but I to haven't. like. Him. I just worked with George Scott, for instance, in something, and um, the last days of Pat. Now I'd heard stories about George, and he's he was a pushover. He's wonderful. I had a crush on him. I'm, maybe I'm the pushover, right? Maybe you make people nicer than they are. Oh. I shouldn't wonder. I don't know, but my husband understands. He's a director, and he, he understands how I get. Yeah. But I always go home to him. I hate your husband. <laughs> oh, did I say that? <laughs> Eva Marie's here. I'll never forget that. When Eva. I write my book about you, that's yes. what that page said. Oh, Eva Marie's here. Oh, I, I don't okay. hate your husband. You realize I said that for no, humorous I purposes. Know. You don't even know. You can tell husband. by the huge laugh you got that it was me. <laughs> you don't know my husband, yeah, but a, you know it's I, it's it's a um, you know Annie and Eli Wallach. Yes, I do. We were having dinner with them the other night, and they've been married. Can you I tell think, this real fast? Oh, 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 yes, they've been married longer than we have, I yeah. think. And we were talking about why why we're still married so much. Yeah. And everybody asked them why are you married so long, and we decided between the four of us that none of us know why we've been married so long. <laughs> this is a good, that's probably why you haven't tried to think about it. Automobiles for the Dick Cavett Show provided courtesy of Pontiac. Accommodations for the Dick Cavett Show staff courtesy of Le Bellage, Hotel de Grande Classe. European elegance coupled with contemporary conveniences in Los Angeles. Le Bellage is a L'Emitage Hotel.